Welcome to the Are You Being Real show. I've got the one and only Lauren Zander in the house today. Thank you. Yeah, I'm fired up to have you on the show. Thank you. You are such a badass. It could be true. Uh, it is true. It's based on results. <laughs> it is. So I think I heard your name for the first time from Mickey Agarwal. Yes. Who I had on the show probably about two years ago. Nice. Uh, David Yaris is a oh, good friend David of mine Yaris. and he's touted and like talked about how amazing you Aww. are as a coach and then i had the opportunity to read your book Aww. about six months ago and i consistently go back to it Aww. maybe it's you maybe it's you maybe it is i think it is maybe. i think it is yeah and uh i just love the way that you live and lead and with such an incredible focus on the truth yeah and also uncovering hidden truths yeah the lies we tell ourselves, the excuses, the things that haunt us. As we were discussing off air before, it's all the things that we don't know about yeah. our family oh and my. our ancestors that yes. impact who we are and what we do. Yep. So fascinated. Yep. Also want to talk like you are such a boss with the Handel Group, what you've uh, built. Uh, it's tough enough to become a coach in uh, general, uh, let alone to build a coaching empire. Aw, empire. Yeah. I, I have... I, Built I plan on to fill. Integrity. I plan to fill in. We would. I am not an empire, but I'd like to be an it empire. It looks like an empire like, compared to, to that. Me. Most coaches are little individuals, right? Like a unicorn building. Yeah. Worlds, yeah. right? Like I'm right. I am big compared to that, but I'm nowhere as big as I wish I was. Cool. Well, let's get into it. Come on. So, one of the things I love to do at the start of these discussions yeah. is to ask the guests to share a vulnerable story. Uh, a good story that you know makes you human and relatable because we've all got plenty, as you know. Yes. Well, I had thought I knew you were going to ask me this question, so <laughs> so I um I was and you wanted a story yeah. that I like don't always tell. Yeah. Okay. So I thought of one yeah, because I don't we do met the same a, podcast no, no, that you've done like no, no, no. a million times. Exactly. So I. I don't always tell why I have feathers in my you hair. You got a lot of feathers in I your got hair. Feathers They're in my beautiful. hair, and because you and I met at Burning Man, I deserve to tell this story. Amazing! Okay. I'm wearing the bracelet you gave. <laughs> I love that. I yeah. paint. You can't see them, but okay. So, imagine five years ago, I have a fiftieth birthday party to go to. A very fancy fiftieth birthday party. I coach the woman, and I'm going to a birthday party. Great. I didn't realize that I'm leaving for Burning Man mm -hmm. on the following Monday, mm -hmm. and I got my hair set for Burning Man. And I, that's like, you think I have feathers now. I had way more feathers, okay? I, I literally, for the first time in my life, consider not going to the party because I think I look like a freak, right? Because wow. not one of these people is going to know what Burning Man is. Fine, I'm going to the party. Okay, get all dressed up in a cocktail dress with feathers in my hair. I'm going to pull it off. I had never been so uncomfortable that people are looking at me and thinking like, and I didn't have that in high school. I didn't have that anywhere. Yeah, I was you don't seem never self-conscious. Yeah. And so by the time I got through the party, I couldn't believe what a jerk I was. That I gave a shit what people thought and that I was so uncomfortable. Like I couldn't even believe I what had What were this you thing. telling yourself? Well, so one is I, I, every time I met someone and chatted, I had to explain <laughs> the feathers and they, they didn't ask. Okay. Okay. And then I was in an explanation about what is Burning Man because they had never heard about it. So now I'm even more of a funny bizarre character because I'm explaining Burning Man like to explain my feathers and I'm doing all of this and I don't actually give a shit to tell like I am a goofball right now okay got it so I then go to Burning Man yeah I come home from Burning Man and I decided I deserved the feathers like I refuse to be someone who cares what other people think and I deserve to be awkward until it disappeared okay Okay, like, screw me. That's ridiculous. And um, it's now been about five years. And I love the woman who puts the feathers in my hair. Yeah. So I like can't, I have never, like, I have no idea when I'm going to get over these feathers. I'm well over what anybody thinks of me. Like, I, it broke me through. But I never really tell that story unless someone really 
hangs out and yeah. goes, what are you doing with the feathers? Yeah, that's so interesting. <laughs> and and, and how, how is that vulnerable for you? Um, because being able to walk into Stanford Business School yeah. with feathers in my hair was pretty hot for me. Like mm. to not, so there's many places I go where I'm trying to legitimize executive and life coaching and so being a burner that is like kind of obvious or yeah. goofy right like so i ha i didn't just take it to the feather yeah. level yeah. i stopped giving a shit at all that like this is it right this is me at stanford mm -hmm. this is, like it so i broke through trying to appear a particular way for others in mm. any way and i didn't even know i still had a hang hangover from it and how has that impacted other areas of your life? It probably just keeps me being a pretty it good does. badass. Right? Nice. Like, keeps me, keep, it just keeps me giggling that it's all an illusion mm -hmm. and that we have so much more rights yeah. to develop and invent than worry about what the fuck people think. Please. Right? Even myself included. So it, 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 it deserves me right. It just deserves me right. And now that I'm I'm 48, I'm heading for 50. Like the next round is like, what what are 50 year old women doing with like you're one of those like the, like I could make fun of myself then yeah. for being some old lady who's like trying to be young, right? So it's like the next thing and the next thing and the next thing that my own voice in my own head yeah. is making like ridiculing me, and then I give it the you're finger, like, right? Fuck off, right? Right? Like no. This is fun. Yeah, I think that's a great segue to something that I read in your book and that I've heard before, and it's all about identifying and owning your freak flags. Yes. What does that mean? So most people, like there's two ways to deal, right? Two ways to deal, right? One is own, what the, own the truth about you that you're yeah. not changing. Or, right, like, so there's many things about me that I'm never changing. And for a long time, you people could complain about, oh, I'm so sorry. Like, it's like the things you're apologizing for that you're never changing mm -hmm. are very likely your freak flags. Mm. And that the, the odds that you should take the shortcut and go, I'm never cleaning my room. I'm never doing laundry. I'm never cooking. I'm never, right? Like, get your nevers because they're never changing is, is a closer miracle mm. than apologizing for the rest of your life and mm. always feeling guilty and bad. Mm. So, so there really is figure out what you're guilty and bad about and make sure they're not your freak flags. Okay. And, and in, I regards, have many. <laughs> in regards to like how that impacts somebody else, I guess is my question. So it's like, if you're constantly late, do you stop apologizing for being late or are you just an asshole? So people should dump like people, people should give you your consequence. Okay. Right. So okay. I, so there's things that don't work. They don't work in business. They don't work. There's many things that don't work and there will be consequences um, but but people adjust to all of that, right? So um, being late is a really good example of one that screws other people, yeah, right. And then what I would have someone do is um, I, I like I have a client, right? Like I'll charge people, not charge them money more than like if you're late, it's fine. I'm yeah. still getting off at the hour, yeah. and you paid yeah. for it. Yeah. So that's not you already bought my time, so that that one works well for me, okay. But, um, so, but I had a client who I love who sucked and it was killing his company uh -huh. and his reputation in his company. And so he actually had to fork it over. And so what we did was um, for every minute he was late, he had to pay a dollar for mm -hmm. every minute to everyone in the meeting. He used to walk around with fives in his pocket. Like he used to walk wow. around and we, and he, and within we, his own company, within his own company. That's like really embarrassing. It was hysterically embarrassing, <laughs> yeah. but every time he paid, no one, everyone could forgive him and laugh that it was his issue. Right. And there was plenty of respect for the other person and he was getting better and dealing. Mm. Right. And you go, how many companies wow. have you had to do that? And I'm like, many many and it works every time because one it gets yeah. people conscious yeah two they giggle yeah three they ha the hands out yeah like pay me yeah and then it pays the piper so there's a there's an integrity in the relationship right very very fascinating because mm -hmm. consequences are an interesting thing i love consequences i know you do i, love I, I know you don't want to get into that they're in not a punishments right um yeah having run accountability groups for a couple of years yeah. i think yeah. people 
I think see a lot of value in having accountability. It helps them stay in their own lane and you know stay on target for goals and maybe being the person you want to be. Yeah. And at the same time, that's more of like a, a macro, bigger picture thing when in reality we have emotions and our emotions change from moment to moment. Okay. And in a moment, we might not want to do the thing that we committed to last week. So I think... Uh, one, the idea of having a consequence to yeah. a changing emotion where it's like, well, yeah, I wanted that last week, but like right now I like want to like eat a full pizza. Yeah, yeah. So I think that consequences are an interesting and scary thing. And I know you're really big about creating positive consequences, which you just gave a great yeah, example yeah, 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 of. Yeah, yeah, and yeah. I know that you have a, a sex promise yes. as well. So. Uh, Tell us more about consequences and uh, about your personal. For example, so I took Emily Fletcher's meditation. Oh, she's amazing. I love Emily, right? And um, for many years, a long time ago, I meditated for many years and then changed my whole practice into manifesting it, like into an entirely different Mm -hmm. practice that I love. But Emily's, right? So I was like, I'm doing what Emily says to do. Okay. So I take it on for six weeks. And you have to meditate twice a day. Twice a day. 15 twice. minutes each time? Um, I did 15 minutes. Okay. Okay. Yeah. 15. She wanted 20. I negotiated down to <laughs> nice. 15. And, um, and so here was how I set it up. I don't get coffee in the morning till I've meditated. Mm-hmm. I'm having coffee. And then I don't get any screen time at night at all unless I've meditated. Guess who meditated? Six, like mm-hmm. seven days it. Like mm-hmm. I needed that mm-hmm. or else I wouldn't keep my promise. Mm-hmm. I needed to even announce it or mm-hmm. I wouldn't keep my promise because if I wait for my mood to want to do the right thing in that moment, it's never coming. Mm-hmm. I have, I have a name for it. It's in my book. I am the original brat, right? I will always pick what I want to do when I want to do it. And I won't even care. Like I'm, I'm a little dark with that. So I need promises and a good consequence. Yeah. Like, am I going to die if I don't get coffee? Is it going to be okay if I don't get my screen time? Yeah. If I lose an episode of something I'm binge watching or yeah. HBO, I, yeah. if I like, I could lose two episodes a week if I don't screw my very cute husband okay. twice a week. Right. Right. I love that. Which is promise. amazing. I love it. Yeah. I need it. You know, 22 years in with the same guy. Yeah. I need that. Right. Because I could blow that shit off fast. Yeah. Right. Does it ever feel inauthentic though when you're? having sex just because it, it's a because of an agreement you made my i don't make agreements unless they matter to me okay. unless they're connected to my dreams i'm not telling you to do what your mother wants you to do yeah. Yeah. <laughs> this is not like this is literally gaming your you to be true to yourself on what matters to you mm-hmm. so you would never make a promise unless you really wanted to keep it mm-hmm. and then most people need a consequence because you're the person who needs the promise, right? Like you weren't doing right. it. So this is not for a place you're good. Yeah. This is for a place you have issues, right? And you don't need to sit on a couch to learn integrity. Mm-hmm. And having your own rules, is that enough accountability or do you have peers that you share updates you can, with? I would never, no, 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 no. Humans, humans left to their own devices will come up with a brilliant excuse, Yeah. right? I My biggest joke I make, that is still so fucked up and true is um, if I'm even thinking I might be late, do you understand? I will not lie why I'm late. I will not tell, I will not tell any lies. Right. So I love messing with the mind and keeping a promise. And I also know that if I don't have a promise with another human, I will not pay my consequence and I will, you know, it was, I just didn't feel good about it. I was still so upset. Like it'll start going into some saga drama or what my flavor of how I get out of keeping promises. Thank you for sharing. So do you have like an accountability circle where other people are sharing their commitments with you as well? I have a group. uh, I have a group. Yeah. I send a daily design Mm -hmm. for what I'm promising for the day. Mm -hmm. Seven days a week. The only way you know it's a weekend is that I don't owe the design till 12. Wow, okay. If I miss setting up my design, yep. I owe 10 bucks. Okay. If I don't close out my day and say how my day went, mm-hmm. I owe 10 bucks. Okay. I can lose to 20. To the circle? To the circle. Yeah. To the circle. And then any promise that I'm making that I'm, I owe, all my promises cost me money to yep. the circle. It's amazing. 
Yeah. I, like, I, In case you wondered if I need my own method, yes. <laughs> accountability for me has, it's the reason why I have this podcast. Cause like I made a public declaration that I was going to launch oh, it by yes. a certain time, three and a half years ago. And consistently it keeps me on track and integrity. It's why I don't eat meat anymore. Oh. I was like ready for a massive up level earlier this year. Yeah. And I gave up uh, alcohol, weed and oh. meat. And I wow. ended up giving up, giving them all up for eight weeks. Wow. And I ne- I was this person who would eat meat three times a day all my life, yeah. totally unconscious about the choice I was making. Ah. And now I just don't eat meat anymore. Ah. And it's like all because I had an accountability system ah. to keep me on track with the commitment. Wow. We are like preaching to the choir. I know, right? I'm like, I didn't even understand it. how much we were. Question for you about truth. Because it's such a loaded topic and anything could be truth. Because like if we have a story that feels true, Mm. then that's true. But you've worked with so many people over the course of your career. And I'm just so fascinated to learn from you. What are some of the most common things you see in people in terms of like owning their truth? I'm just very curious to just pick your brain as to what you've learned about humans. Okay, so... The most interesting still blows people away and they don't ever get it. Like it takes years to get no matter how much, like no matter what level of work you've done on yourself. No one understands that their inner dialogue is not true Mm -hmm. and that they need to consent to the thought for it to be true. Mm. But people think their voice in their head is themselves, right? And so I do a joke like if your hand was starting to do this to you, you'd run to the doctor and you don't go that, like you would go, what's wrong with my hand, right? You don't go, I, you, know, you just wouldn't be a lunatic thinking that like hide it and don't like you, you would deal yes. like something's wrong with it. Yeah. But the way we talk to ourselves in our head, the, what we say to ourselves, we, it, it's a lot of this mm-hmm. or even way crazier right? Way crazier. And because we then mm-hmm. hide our own inner dialogue yeah. and what it's saying, it, it becomes real. So any secrets you're keeping, anything you're hiding, you're hiding it because you think there's truth in it, right? And so the property of creating reality is mm-hmm. anything you won't say mm-hmm. becomes true. Mm. If you won't tell me you don't, you know, you don't like my hair, it then in your own mind, Lauren's hair right? So now you're right. Mm -hmm. And now you can't tell me. Mm. Right? Because you don't want to, that would be mean. (laughs) Right? Versus you even question what the hell did it just say to you? Let alone, like, so we get lost in our minds. Mm -hmm. We never untangle what our mind is doing for a living. Mm -hmm. We never figure out where it's the inner dialogue truly came from, like mm-hmm. where all the voices about mm-hmm. money, about sex, about women, about men. Like we've never investigated it because we're so busy hiding from it mm-hmm. and hiding it. Except if you want to know where the bully lives and all the psycho that's going on, it's in how you listen to the voice in your head. Mm-hmm. And so the truth that sets you free is starting to realize there's not a lot of truth in there. So there's not a lot of truth in there. So no, no, <laughs> nope sorry how do you get to the root of these kind of these stories i so in the book right so so first i get people to dream like yeah, yeah like we're not doing this for nothing we're doing this because there's like a vision mm-hmm. worth having i break life out into 12 different areas because most people could be like i'll just take care of sex money and my family mm-hmm. right like not really have a vision for different areas of your whole life and separate it out so you can start to hear the crazies and the limitations that you have so i care about people having big visions right and then you know a community mm. right do you have any idea how many people blow off community right like uh? Right. Or there's so Mm, many things. Creativity, I imagine. Oh my God. Learning and adventure, learning and adventure. Right. Like as if you have to only go on, that's a vacation. I just said vacation. I didn't say vacation. Right. So people don't dream. So imagine you now wrote out your dreams. Mm -hmm. Now I have why you need to go after your inner dialogue because you don't even believe in your own dreams. You don't think you can have those Mm -hmm. things. Now you have an agenda to hear like, what the hell is that saying? That says I can't do that. Right. So all of a sudden we need a, we need a, 
a reference, like where are we going? So then I can have you start to listen to your own voice in your mm -hmm. head. And then we can start calling chicken, like fears talking, mm -hmm. moody, temperamental, get out of most things talking, or generalizations and theories that tell you you can't have what you want, which is really either a fear, mm -hmm. right? So I get you to break into your inner dialogue and get that that all, is all um, what I call kakamemi. Mm -hmm. and <laughs> what other surprises do, do you help people discover? Haunting memories. So mm. people think that the memories they've collected, they understand why they're haunting them or why you use that memory when you think of your dad or when you think of your positively or negatively. Like, mm -hmm. so people don't understand, like you could have, like, come on, we could have a kabillion memories, but we only go back to that one from mm -hmm. high school and that one from sex and that one from kindergarten. Right. And so I get a person to understand that honestly, why you're remembering it mm -hmm. usually has lies in it. You, you like, there's a lesson you didn't learn. There's, there's a way you're using it that manipulates your, like you defend something most likely creepy. Mm -hmm. Like, so the way your lower self operates is it uses those memories. It doesn't deal with those personality traits mm -hmm. and it doesn't get what it really wants in its life. And it's all kind of postured together. Mm -hmm. And so what I do is I get a person by writing it all out to go, who just wrote it all out? I'm like, that's your highest self. Right. Let's invent a higher mm -hmm. self to see a lower self. Right. What's the lower self? Chicken breath. So I, I'm languaging lower self so a person can break into their mainframe and dream. Mm -hmm. It's such a challenging thing because I know that when I started doing some self-development work, the mm -hmm. idea of going back in time and looking at a memory, it didn't make conceptual sense to me as to what am I storing or what am I hiding in that or how is something that happened to me when I was 12 when mm -hmm. director took away my favorite line in a play and I started to cry. Like, how is that still impacting my narrative yeah. as a 30 year old man? Yeah. And now having done a lot of this type of work, I really see that there yeah. are choices that I've made throughout my life that I don't even realize or remember that I made yeah. the choice. And that's impacting the way I think through yeah. something in real time and process information and the way I see the world. What else is wildly cool? is um so i i make people uh rate their lives on a scale of one to ten mm -hmm. and it's and the scale is a state of being mm -hmm. so i make eight eight is a, it's not it's a state of integrity when you're an eight right there's physical integrity mm -hmm. emotional integrity and spiritual integrity and they're all happening at the same time what you think how you feel and what you're doing are all happening right now, mm -hmm. right? That's integrity mm -hmm. in my definition of it, mm -hmm. right? And personal integrity is that you're being true to yourself, okay? The really funky thing is that the memories and hauntings you use to explain why you're a four or a five in that area, when you actually get to be an eight in your actions, mm -hmm. you have whole different memories that you pick out from your past. Hmm. The state picks the memories to yeah. defend itself wow. too. It's there. That, that is so fascinating. I'm curious uh, to a ask you this question because yeah. I'm always in the conversation with people about authenticity. Yeah. And so I usually get three different responses from people. Okay. One is the most common one I get is people th think that they're very authentic. Yes. Uh, <laughs> second <laughs> is that people know that they're not living completely authentically and mm. that they want to work on certain areas of their lives, usually to be more courageous and to go after the things that they want or to speak their truth, et cetera. And then there's other people that are just already bored and not paying attention. Uh -huh. So I'm curious, most specifically in regards to that first bucket in terms of people thinking they're authentic. I'm just curious to get your take on that. Um, people think they have integrity like they have a couch <laughs> yeah either you have it or you it's don't it's a noun yeah yeah not fluid it's not a moment to moment yeah. at, like your running is not <laughs> yeah it's not like i you, exercise healthy is not something you have yeah it's something you do every minute of the day right so um 
integrity and authenticity is a ver it's like a verb of a moment to moment life and most people don't understand how much they lie and how much they defend lying as a state of integrity mm. see the 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 man behind the, the the thing behind the curtain is the thing creating that of course i have integrity right we we started out talking about you know my 3 year old like, when do people start lying? And I'm like, the minute they can talk, right? And I'm sorry, it's not, I don't think it's a dirty word I just said, I, humans lie, right? The, I remember the first time I caught my daughter, you know, telling me she didn't eat a cookie and it was all over her face. And she hadn't quite gotten the concept, wash your face before you lie about eating a cookie, right? Don't worry, she didn't get it for a few more years and still got caught, didn't quite get it, yeah. right? That's actually how we gain learning how to lie, right? And then, oh, it's a secret, it's none of your business, I'm a lot. So the way lying has masterfully mm -hmm. manipulated us into in thinking it has integrity, mm -hmm. fucks authenticity for the rest of its life. Right, like, oh boy, oh yeah. No, no, because then you think you're authentic if you're even telling what the voice says. Mm. And I don't even think that's authentic. Right. Oh, we got you got to go to work on the depth of what is your truth. And if and I don't know how you, you know, mm -hmm. this is me not trying to self promote, but I really don't know how someone would do it if they didn't do the basics in my book to find if you have never uncovered and told all the ways you lie and told every truth of about your life like you, when you stick your hand in fire yeah. you really do learn yeah never to do that again you how yeah. many times do you get burned in life right like not that many you learned that right but if lying people never have the burn mm -hmm. right and if you hear people who got caught cheating right and they and they went through freaking hell getting caught cheating most of them actually stop it right like many stop mm -hmm. it many learn from mistakes authenticity only comes from dealing with being a liar sorry wow that juxtaposition and contrast yes. right I, i'm like no most people can't possibly be yeah. really authentic it's not yeah. like you're not authentic in every area this is not a cross sure. the board sure sure so fascinating. It's something we were talking about off air is um, I was telling you about my love life because yes. I did that tell all a couple of weeks yes. ago on the podcast. Yeah. And you instantly started asking me questions about my parents. Yes. And once again, logically speaking, I don't, I don't think most would think like, oh, you know, why, why you'd be focusing in on my parents' love life and my parents' history as it pertains to me being single yeah. at 36. Yes. So, yes. Why? Why so, were you asking that? So, um, you're a little too cute. You're a little too successful. You're a little too of it. Like there is nothing wrong with you. So if you can't, like, and what? You, there's not enough women who want to get married and have a family. This is LA. <laughs> <laughs> um, so, so when it doesn't actually make sense, right? That's suspicious, mm -hmm. right? When it's suspicious right? Then you have to go back to the original source, right? You're doing like, if you're not dating, okay, fine. That guy, like you, you, you go through all the basic questions. Are you dating? Are you looking? Are you doing the work? Are you attractive? Are you a great man? Or like, oh, that you're, the, the system's clean. Then you have to, then you have to go. There's corruption from the past you don't know about. And if it's in, if you don't know about, if you don't know about your parents' real history, which most people have never shared or told because they want to keep everybody mm -hmm. together and happy. And why should you know bad things from our past? And it's none of your business. Mm -hmm. And I don't want to hurt your feelings. But my parents are so conservative and prude. Yeah. Mine too. <laughs> I, I was like my Orthodox, Orthodox <laughs> Jewish parents. Yeah. No, they didn't wait to lose their virginity. They're in their eighties now. And you're like, when did your mother lose her virginity? I'm like 15, 16. So, and you're like, what? No one knew. She like like everyone's been yeah. lying, and they lie about sex, drugs, and rock and roll. Just yeah. to, like you, we did not invent it. So how does that pertain? Like, let's say that that was the truth. Like, if my mom or dad lost their virginity at fifteen or sixteen, like why? How would that affect me? Because so the thing I study, yeah, which I learned the hard way, like from missing it in clients, 
right, is epigenetics, right? And I, and I say, oh my God, everybody's got the epis. We got the epis, right? The epis are you better understand the emotional things that happen to your parents. Not just your blue eyes came from your dad, but oh my God, he has wandering blue eyes, mm. right? You bet, like you need to understand the facts of where you came from so that you can take care of yourself and evolve it. If something doesn't make sense and you can't break through and you want to, and you're doing all the right work, then it's in the epis, right? It's in the lineage, it's in the family history, and there's something that's going to repeat or that you're even spiritually speaking, you're not getting married, right? If you want to look at what's really happening is you don't, you want to believe in it. You want to believe in it, but something's off. You can't find the real one. There's like, why not? Right. It doesn't actually make sense. Right. And so then I would, now I want, and then if, what'll happen if we go through your parents' history and let's say mm -hmm. we uncover some real more human stories. <laughs> let's be real. Right. Man with penis yeah. will act. Okay. Don't tell me a conservative daddy didn't have fantasies, didn't like what he liked, didn't right? like, don't turn men into something they're not. I don't care. It's your father. I don't right? like my father has bad stories. That sounds human. Okay. The more I understood it, the more I could understand myself, mm -hmm. right? Why I was such an interesting dater from mm -hmm. my past. And then I could break through on what mattered most to me. So the more you understand their past, the more you, and then I also wanted you to check out your siblings' past mm -hmm. because again, you don't know that they all are a prism of the same damn stone, right? And if you don't, if the the if the light coming off doesn't make sense to you, you don't know what stone you're in, right? You're, it, come on. Mm -hmm. So I love that. That's I'm a. It's a little archaeology. Thank you for that. Yeah. I'm excited to do my homework, and when I say excited, that's probably not the right word, but. I'm curious. I'm definitely curious to uncover, turn over that stone to see what's there. Yeah. And, and then the, the, why I love my job is because I love people mm -hmm. and I want humans to love the truth mm -hmm. and the truth has the dark side in it. Yeah. And we are so weird about hiding the dark side Yeah. that we can't bring any light to it. Right. That leads me, I guess, to another question that I wanted to ask you because you're a coach and having coached a lot of people over the last couple of years, when you're coaching people, you're getting to experience lots of different sides of them. Yeah. And sometimes people like to lie to their coach in order to, oh. in order to look good. <laughs> and some days, like my clients don't want to talk to me oh. and um, like I've experienced the whole spectrum and one thing that I've heard about you is you're not afraid to fire a client. I fire people. And yeah. you also just, you don't tolerate bullshit. So I'm curious if you could kind of take us, take us there because I think that your bullshit meter is like very, very good. So how do you smell bullshit? And I'm just curious to. Well, first of all, that. I can, I invented myself as someone who is like, like, the person who holds people's dreams. Like I hold all the balloons mm -hmm. and I'm a home base. And I'm, and so my integrity is holding all these dreams. And the more dreams I'm holding like a contractor, like I call, like I'm a spiritual contractor. I'm holding contracts. Okay. Mm -hmm. And I will not hold a contract. Like, and if I hold a contract that's full of shit, I'm ruining the whole teams, mm. right? So I, I don't have, a, I have not allowed to hold bullshit. Mm -hmm. Okay. doesn't mean I don't get played. Right. But, but I, the minute I know I'm getting played, I will not, I have to get rid of the person because mm. it poisons the well. How do you know if you're getting played? Um, well, yeah, right. Um, uh, results don't turn out. Mm -hmm. Right. If you eat this, right. And you really exercise and you take a picture of the scale. Yeah. It works, right? You go, you get a job, you put money in the bank, it's in the bank account, right? So there's many things in the world, thank God, that are so predictable. So the, the concept that actions lead to results is, is like a, a duh, right? It's non-negotiable. Mm -hmm. So if results aren't happening, the odds that the person is lying about the actions 
is a duh, right? Like there, there mm-hmm. there's a pretty good duh right there, mm-hmm. right? I can change the system. Like yeah. I just get tighter and tighter. Yeah, on the you don't. Leash. You also don't tolerate excuses. Um, not for someone who has yeah. a dream. Okay. Right, and I'm really a coach, right? I, you like I, I my my the way I call it is I'm doing a three legged race. Yeah. Right. You're on my work. We're, we're tied. Yeah. And we're running, and I care about your dream like a crazy person like a crazy person and we're going together and my job is to get you off my goddamn leg for god's yeah, sakes right. run yourself yeah, right yeah and i use an object at rest stays at rest object in motion stays at motion and i'm a threat like and there's a force that needs to come to get you in the right motion and so it works and it's been working for 20 years so if you're not getting the right results mm-hmm. two things could be happening only two in my book epi's or you're lying about you're bullshitting me, okay? And so then you'll either take a tighter leash, mm-hmm. like send me an email. I get emails every day from people, right? Every day on on what they're promising. Mm-hmm. That's hard for them. Mm-hmm. You don't send me that email. You're you know you owe some not me ten bucks. Someone like we're we're so I, and then if you don't do it, I fire you, right? Mm-hmm. Like I'm 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 a coach. I want to win. I want to get you your dreams. I'm not going to lose my integrity for, I don't need your money. I don't want your money. I don't want bad money. Mm -hmm. So, and that's how all my coaches roll, right? That's, that's what built this company. We're not for everybody. Mm -hmm. So there's just, there's no back door. You're either playing or you're not. And we're failing together. Yeah. I'm, I'm really okay with failing together. I'm really, the, you go, how did you invent your method? Yeah. It's, it's, I had to figure out the next thing to get the person to the dream. And the next yeah. thing, like my desire to fulfill on your dreams mm-hmm. will have me invent yeah. more content yep. as long as we're really in it together. Yeah. That, that was the challenge that I had with, uh, with my winning weeks program is there was a back door because I was too nice. You do seem like and people, be on that. people, people would take the back door, oh. even if they, you know, wanted yeah. to you accomplish their goal, and even though I cared, yeah, <laughs> yeah. The next question, I guess, I'll just like um, continue on from the last question, but something yeah. that we were talking about off air is you that you were giving me some coaching about my love life, and you're like, it's not like just you, it's like I want like to impact the world. Yeah. So I'm curious to know about your vision and what you see possible. Um. So my story on myself is I don't get to vote about my life until my last blink. I am never off the hook. And it's how, and I, I don't question whether my method could, is good, right? Or could change a person's life. Mm-hmm. I don't think it's the answer to everything. I think it's a foundation to a lot of good work in the world, right? There's so many, there's so many good things in the world, but like, so it's a serious piece that needs to be in. No yeah. one's attacking, lying. Yeah. I feel alone. Okay, and I like my territory. So um, I, I'm devastated because I just want to reach the world. I want everyone to have access to it. My mm-hmm. line is, um, my line that uh, somebody gave me was I teach, I take uncommon knowledge and I want to make it common. And that's my job before I die. And then to turn it over to whoever wants to run mm-hmm. the company next. So, so I, Thank you know, you. so my ability yeah. to like get yeah. you married, I better be able to get you married, right? I better be able to get to the bottom of this, right? Or else I couldn't possibly do what I want to do in the world. It's amazing. That's so cool. And I know you have curriculum as well that is taught in universities, MIT and Yale, like all these like amazing institutions, which is so cool. Yes. So is that a big piece of it, is getting the curriculum in schools? So my dream was from, and this was my dream that I said a long time ago when my sister was crying and we were standing there and she didn't know what she wanted to do. And I was like, well, if I was going to not be a chicken and I was going to really go for it, I would break, I would close the gap. So the gap I want to close is mm-hmm. if I get to the Harvards, if I get to the highest level of, 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 of the brand of education, why do I want that? So that by the time I bring it into foster care, where we teach in foster care, I'm closing the gap. And, and there is, there shouldn't be a gap. This is how to close the gap is inner work. Mm. 
in like you know and so that's my crazy dream and so getting it into universities getting it to the kids getting it to the teachers right i if a teacher wants anyone who's listening that's a teacher my work is for free for you if you're a writer like actually publicly writing my work is for free for you because i want the narrative to change mm -hmm. and i want teachers to teach it mm -hmm. right if you like it it's yours right and so i i'm a missionary Amazing. I <laughs> love what you stand for and what you want. I, I mean, I fully believe in your work and I look at the world today and where we're at is a society and civilization and watching the Brett Kavanaugh thing. And I'm just like, why don't we just tell the truth? Why don't we let the truth set us free? So thank you for creating a model that works and has served so many people and has endless potential. Yeah, a couple more questions okay. uh, in this little part of the interview here. I'm curious, what is the biggest personal struggle that you've overcome? Wow. Really? I can, I get betrayed. <laughs> I get good and betrayed. <laughs> I like, le like, I like giving everything away. Yeah. I like, and then I can get, I can get robbed, stabbed in the front and ransacked. Mm. And then I'm horrified that I didn't see it. Mm. Got it. Doesn't happen very much anymore. Uh, yeah, I don't believe, I Doesn't believe happen. that. But it really still can. Like we well, have like a lot of rules. Yeah. We have a lot of rules in my company so that Lauren doesn't get to just randomly hire someone she likes. Yeah. Right. Like I, I could be, I am a little dumb mm. and want to save anyone and everyone. Mm -hmm. And I can be taken like a nink. That's good awareness to know that so you can make the adjustments. Yeah. What would you say is your greatest opportunity for growth? I would say my biggest problem is my, I am not money hungry. If I was a fucking money hung, like if I was money hungry, yeah, this whole thing would be so much bigger. So it's a problem that I'm so happy in my 1790s farmhouse. And I don't like, I, we need a new septic. Like I, I am not, I don't need no porn. Like, I like, and I, if I did, and I, and I, and then the problem is, is I know you don't need to need one, but yeah, like there's this must, like I have to, like I literally my entire year, I have to focus on wealth and I swear to God, it gives me a little mm -hmm. bit of the creeps, right? Cause I don't, I'm not that person, mm -hmm. but it's, it's killing my business to not want to grow mm. huge because you really can measure reach by money in ways to Right. And then you can grow even bigger if you're fun. Right. Like, oh, dear God, my comfort is killing me. Mm -hmm. Thank you for your honesty. Little, little yeah. There. And then <laughs> last question of this yeah. little rapid fire round is uh, what's the best advice that you could give your kids? Be true to yourselves. Right. I'm not going to I'm not forcing anything on you. I don't, I'm not making you do school. Well, I'm not ma you. You I, I will make sure you eat. Sleep. Yeah. Loved. Yeah. Clapped for. Yeah. And everything else is really up to you. Yeah. Right. So I'm really letting them grow like weeds. And then the most important thing is, I believe, just keeping my marriage yeah. in love and hot. Mm. And then if I show them this and that I'm alive and happy and mm. my husband's alive and happy and we're being true to ourselves, mm -hmm. that they will mm -hmm. knock us off and mm -hmm. be who they want to be. I love that. You're really giving them the freedom as well as being an example. What final words of uh, encouragement uh, do you want to leave with the uh, listeners of Are You Being Real today? That telling that you lie is funny and everybody else lies too. So when you fork one over, you know what I lie about? Well, right. I'm not oh, okay. right. You know what I like? You literally can go, what do you lie about? Right? The 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 moral of the story is if you can tell one on yourself, you can ask it. And and everyone's having the same issues. Right. And your friends specifically have your issues, right? Like you could bet birds of a feather are flocking together. The, so, yeah, so come on, break, come on, go out, out of bounds. will help everyone go out of bounds. The one and only Lauren Zander. Lauren, you are welcome back on the show anytime. We're, I love we're you. coming back to unravel your, your, your relationship stuff. <laughs> All right. Sounds good. I'm totally game.